British government cares about war crimes. In March, they went to war to prevent atrocities in Kosovo. I will promise a full cooperation of Britain in bringing to justice those who have stained Kosovo with ethnic cleansing and genocide. Every NATO leader made it clear that uh, war criminals are going to be brought to justice. They stand at risk and we should be prepared to use the war crimes legislation to bring them to account. But despite the concerns over Kosovo, Britain's record on war criminals has not been good. Anthony Savonyuk is the only man ever to be convicted in Britain for Nazi war crimes. But tonight we can reveal that many more Nazi war criminals found refuge in this country. And they were brought here by the British government. In 1947, an entire division of the Nazi SS, some 8,000 men, came to live in Britain, and many of them are still here today. In just about every reasonable sized town, you'll find somebody associated or a direct descendant of a member of the Gleason Division. For the first time, we can reveal evidence that the division which came to Britain included men who had committed war crimes. Millions of people lost their lives at the hands of the Nazis during the Second World War. But Ukraine suffered more than most. lost more of its population during the Second World War than any other nation in occupied Europe. Ukraine was entirely occupied during the course of the war. Many of the major battles of the Second World War on the Eastern Front were fought on Ukrainian lands. The country itself was uh, fairly uh, thoroughly devastated. Despite this devastation and two years of Nazi occupation, Thousands of Ukrainians, mainly from the west of the country, volunteered to fight for the German cause. Romova Gubernatora SS Brigade Führer, Dr. Wechtera. In April 1943, in Lvov in western Ukraine, the Germans announced that after repeated Ukrainian requests, the Führer had agreed to the formation of a division of Ukrainian volunteers within the Nazi SS. The 14th SS Division, Galician. Despite Germany's terrible oppression of the country, 80,000 men volunteered to join within the first two months. Enough for two divisions. Germans came with an anti-Soviet message, a message that some Ukrainians found very appealing. People saw this as one option for asserting Ukrainian independence, and they took it. Many young Ukrainians were drawn to the Waffen SS for the glamour, the dash of these elite units, and because of all German units, the Waffen SS had this anti-communist crusading zeal which also meant that it was a savage fighting force.
The German Waffen SS was a fanatical military unit which had grown up out of the units that had guarded the concentration camps in Nazi Germany. The men were specially selected, they were very heavily indoctrinated. And although that fanatical core was diluted as the war went on, the SS always had a ferocious reputation for ideological commitment and fanaticism. Like other SS units, the recruits to the Galicia Division all swore an oath of absolute allegiance and personal obedience to Adolf Hitler. The Germans appointed officers with specific and singular expertise to the Galicia Division. Men like the divisional commander SS General Fritz Freitag, who in 1941 served with an SS unit which killed over 6,000 unarmed civilians in occupied Russia. Men like the commander of the 5th SS Galician Regiment, Franz Lechthaler, who organized the mass execution of over 5,900 Jewish men, women and children in Bielorussia in 1941. Men like the commander of the 4th SS Galician Regiment, Siegfried Binz, an anti-partisan specialist who in one operation alone was involved in the murder of over 10,000 alleged partisans and Jews. And men like SS Colonel Friedrich Dayan, a member of Himmler's personal command staff, a unit estimated to be responsible for the deaths of over 100,000 people. Few, if any, of the foreign SS divisions had so many officers with such experience of mass murder. And all of these German officers served with the Galicia Division. They weren't soldiers, they were primarily policemen, people who had done dirty work for the German regime. Ardent Nazis. Michael Melnick's father was in the Galicia Division. He has spent 12 years talking to hundreds of former members to research the division's history. The Germans wanted to exploit them and use them and weren't fussy and for that reason they would have given them jobs they didn't want to do themselves. Without access to the Soviet archives, it was very difficult to work out exactly what the uh, Ukrainian units had been up to. But things have now changed. The material is coming out of the archives. And this gives us a much deeper knowledge of who the men were who ended up in the division that came to England and what they had been doing before they joined the Ukrainian division. And some of these men had a long history of serving the Germans. In 1941, as the Germans invaded Western Ukraine, many people welcomed them as liberators from two years of Soviet oppression. The Germans brought with them a specially trained unit of Ukrainian nationalists, the Nightingale Battalion. And as they entered Lvov, they discovered that the departing Soviet secret police had murdered several thousand Ukrainian nationalists and intellectuals in cold blood. Although many of the victims were Jewish, the mob blamed the Jews for the massacre, and a bloody pogrom ensued. It's a regrettable but true fact that there was a very significant component of the Jewish community in eastern Galicia, western Ukraine, that had welcomed the Soviets in 1939 and had actively collaborated with the Soviets during the period of their administration. Some of these people were then targeted for reprisals. There's nothing decent about what happened. But then there's nothing decent about what they did to their fellow neighbors, Poles and Ukrainians and other Jews alike during the Soviet occupation. Several thousand Jews were killed over the next few days.
Members of the Nightingale Battalion, as well as other Ukrainian units serving the Germans, were implicated in the pogrom in Lvov. This footage was taken by a German amateur cameraman in Lvov that day. It is some of the only filmed footage of a Nazi action against the Jews which has survived the war. After the war, West German courts directly accused members of the 2nd Company of the Nightingale Battalion of involvement in the deaths of the Jews of Lvov. The Nightingale Battalion became an auxiliary police battalion, working for the Germans on anti-partisan duties before joining the Galicia Division in 1943. But were units of the Galicia Division itself involved in war crimes. By 1944, um, southern Poland was in a state of near anarchy. There were Polish, Ukrainian resistance movements, Jewish partisan units in the forest. All of these um, operations relied upon the support of civilian populations providing the partisans with food and supplies. The uh, civilian population would sometimes voluntarily help partisan units. Sometimes they had no choice. The Germans wanted a reign of terror. Anyone who helped the partisans usually was, was shot. By early 1944, the Polish village of Huta Pianiatska had become a refuge for Polish villagers from the surrounding area and for Jews fleeing Nazi persecution. But after reports of partisan activity in the area, members of the 2nd Battalion of the 4th Regiment of the Galicia Division were sent on a reconnaissance patrol to the village. Mieczysław Bernatsky used to live in Huta Pianiatska. He was 13 years old at the time. Some Ukrainian soldiers, about a platoon in strength, came out of the forest to a kind of meadow and started to fire at Huta from small arms and rifles. Then one man in his prime he was put his rifle in a fork between the branches of a fruit tree and started to fire at the Ukrainians. And as a result, he killed two Ukrainians. And the two corpses lay there for three or four days. And the Jews, whose clothes were in tatters, who had nothing to wear, undressed these Ukrainian soldiers and put their clothes on. And the bodies lay there naked. They were corpses, of course. They were the division's first casualties of the war. They were given a hero's funeral with full military honors. According to the Galicia Division's own chronicle, the loss was keenly felt. It said, now the division starts to write its history in blood. A few days later, the Galician unit went back to Huta Pianiatska. Then the Germans came with these Ukrainian soldiers and surrounded the village. It was Monday, the 28th of February. Stefania Jasinska was also in Huta Pianiatska that day. First they fired because they thought our people would shoot back but it was quiet, and our people didn't do anything. They entered the village only when they were sure nobody would shoot back. People were crying and screaming. Later, three Ukrainians entered the church. 
One was shooting in the air. They shouted that partisans are kept here. From one point of view, you could say we were a base for the Russian partisans. But the Russians used us. And when it came to defending the village, they were nowhere to be found. Then they took groups of people one by one to barns and houses, poured petrol over them and burned them. The screaming and crying was terrible. Old women kissed their hands and feet to be set free. They killed and burned 850 people. You know, we could not recognize who was who, as they were burned in the barns, the houses and stables. You could only recognize somebody if they weren't burned completely, and only then by their clothes. Because if one corpse stuck to another, the clothes stayed and you could recognize the color. And otherwise only the bones remained. Father, mother, brother, grandmother, uncle, aunts, cousins. They were all burned and we could not find them. I could only find part of my father's belt and coat. We were taken as the last group to the barn. So one German was in front and three Ukrainians were on both sides and at the back. And when they were urging us on, they spoke in Ukrainian. I escaped from this barn because my brother-in-law opened the door and we escaped to the forest. My grandmother was taken to such a barn and there the Germans shot her and burned her, a woman of 85 years. She used to say to me, I would like to survive this war and see what Poland will be like but she did not live to see it. News of the massacre soon leaked out. A month later, the Polish underground sent coded messages to London, which specifically implicated the Galicia division in the attack. Elements of the 4th Regiment were deployed at Hudepinetska, they were deployed in the initial attack. They were not ultimately responsible for the pacification of the village. By that time, the responsibility had passed to a following German unit. So you were saying that they left early and then somebody else came and did it? Yes, indeed. No, no, no. If it was like that, the people would have realized it and escaped to the forest. Don't listen to this. They were there until the end. I've also been told, and from the accounts I have, when the final pacification of that village occurred, the Ukrainian unit had moved on. If somebody tells me otherwise, then all I can do is listen to what's being said and, and investigate it to the best of my ability. Members of the 4th Regiment of the Galician Division were later awarded the Iron Cross for their anti-partisan activities in the area. In October 1947, the Polish government made an official complaint to the United Nations about the Galician division, in particular for their part in the mass murder in Huta Pianiacka. Polish authorities are still investigating those killings on February the 28th, 1944. The lead prosecutor is Bogoslava Marcinkowska. To była okrutna zbrodnia. It was an evil crime that led to the deaths of over 800 people, according to our estimates, and the people responsible for it should be brought to justice. 
Our investigation resulted in gathering substantial evidence. Altogether, we have 120 witnesses. The evidence we obtained in our investigation explicitly points to one of the subunits of the 14th SS Division Galician. We have no doubt at all. It was that division, and our witnesses so testify. We understand that members of the 4th Regiment of the Galicia Division, which was involved at Huta Pianiatska, came to live in the West after the war. Some of the Ukrainian participants in the initial attacks yes. are in Britain, is that correct? That's correct, yes. In May 1944, the division was inspected by the leader of the SS himself, Heinrich Himmler. He, at least, was in no doubt about their attitude towards the Poles. I know if I gave the division the order to exterminate the Poles in this area or that, then I would become a very popular man amongst you. 